All right, turn your Bibles to Genesis 50. We're going to pray about, for, we're going to talk about forgiveness, perdonar. Genesis 50. Si no tienes una Biblia atrás. Genesis 50. Genesis is, <clears throat> is the first book in the Bible, so we're going to talk about forgiveness. And uh, if you'll go to Genesis 50, verse 17. Yeah, so we're in Genesis 50, verse 17, and the title of the message this evening, or the title of the sermon this evening is Forgiveness. Uh, basically, it's forgiveness, and, and it's an important topic, um, especially as we start out the year, or we're into the second month of the year, it's, uh, where as people round out years, usually in the beginning and the end of the years when people look inside themselves to different things, one of the things that's really hard for people to do is to forgive other people. And I actually have a really good example of how forgiveness can lead to pride and get in the way of, of, of being able to do other things. But here in Genesis, we see that Joseph, his father is, a, is about to pass, and Joseph had been sold in slavery. Joseph had gone through a lot of trials and tribulations through his life, and uh, he ended up being the second in command to Pharaoh. And as, he, as his father is now dead and buried, we see that his brothers fear that Joseph is going to uh, take them. And if you look there in verse 14 of Genesis 50, before we get to the, the verse 17, it says, And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will per peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent messengers unto Joseph, saying, the fa Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespasses of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went down and fell before his face, And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. And one of the things that we see here is the brothers come, and instead of being concerned about their father's death, or being concerned about moving on and doing the work of the Lord, They're guilty in their conscience for what they did to Joseph. You know, they're the ones that sold Joseph to slavery. They also told their father that he died. Basically, they committed a, a, a grievous lie. And then we see here that they're very concerned about that. And they go and they're like, look, our father told us to tell you not to kill us. And how does Joseph respond to this? He says, look, you meant it for evil, but, I meant, but God meant it for good. And so Joseph at already had forgiven them. Joseph had already moved on, and I think that's why Joseph was so successful. Think about the things that Joseph went went through. I mean, he was sold in slavery. He worked for Potiphar. Potiphar's wife accused him of adultery, so he was thrown in jail, and then he he had to, you know, he served in jail. He was there for a while. Then the, the king, or the pharaoh, had a dream of the seven cows and the seven uh, corn stalks. And then after that, he became second in command. But he had to suffer all of that. Then he met his family again, and he was reunited with them. But never did he hold a grudge. And I think the reason he didn't hold a grudge is because he was able to forgive or put behind those things. And, you know, the Bible talks about forgiveness. It tells us to forgive others as God has forgiven us. And one of the things that we do in life is that when life gets tough, we don't want to forgive people or we don't want to... Uh, let go of the things that are holding us back. You know, you know people say, oh, I, I, I can forgive, but I'm not going to forget. Or, or, or I, I'm just not at the point right now in life where I can forgive that person. But God says that that's a duty of ours. It's a commandment for us to forgive. You know, the, the word forgive basically just means to grant pardon for uh, remission of an offense, to absolve. It's to give up or claim one account on account of of rem, a remit or a dead obligation to grant pardon, uh, to cease to feel resentment against, uh, to cancel an indebt uh, indebtedness or liability, 
or to pardon an offense or an offender. So the Bible just basically tells us that, I mean, the Bible, the dictionary tells us that forgiveness is just when you, you let go of whatever it is. If someone owes you money, you just forgive the money. If someone uh, did you wrong, you just forgive them automatically for what they did. But you don't understand. I've never, you've never suffered like I've suffered. I've been through some, th the Bible says we just forgive. And you say, well, th th that doesn't make any sense to me. As a matter of fact, I, I was out soul winning today with Cregan and I ran into two guys that almost had the exact same story. The first guy, he goes and he's like, look, I'll listen to you, but I don't like, I don't like your confidence. That's what he said. I don't like your confidence the way you're, you're presenting yourself right now. He says, you're too confident, which I don't even know what that means. But apparently I was too confident. But then he let me give him the gospel presentation, but he wouldn't pray. And the reason he wouldn't pray is because he said, well, you know, I've been to church and I've been through religions and they, they always have rules and they always have. Basically what he's saying is he, he can't forgive people for what he feels that they've done to him. Because that's really what it comes down to, right? And then I met another gentleman who told me the exact same thing. He's like, well, I've already tried church. I've already tried all this. But I took him through the whole gospel presentation. And then he understood the presentation and he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He accepted Jesus Christ. And I think the difference is when you let go of whatever is holding you back, you're able to move forward, right? You know, if you understand God forgave you all your sins, then you're able to accept that Jesus Christ is the only way. Because sometimes, you know, we're so arrogant and pompous, we can't even forgive ourselves for our sins. But God says, look, I've already forgiven you all of your sins. And, um, you know, so the thing that we have to focus on is we don't want to be a slave to sin. And there's many sins that the Bible talks about, but I think forgiveness is one of those sins that to this day and this day and age, it's one that people struggle with. People struggle with letting go of things that people have been wrong with. Everybody feels like they're better than the other person. See, when, when you don't forgive someone, what you're saying is, I'm better than you are. You know, because what you're saying is, you owe me something for that wrong. You owe me, uh, uh, the, the great example we see in the Bible is, the guy forgives, and we're going to go through that, but he's forgiven his debt, but he's like, now you owe me money, and I'm going to take you to jail until you pay me back my money. When the reality is, everything comes from God. There's nothing for us to, nobody owes us anything, because really everything is, is derived from God. If anything, we, go, uh, we owe God everything, but we can't give him everything, because there's nothing that we can do to get into heaven other than believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's go... Go to Matthew 6, go to Matthew 6, and then we'll be in Ephesians 4. Go to Matthew 6, that's the first uh, book in the New Testament, Matthew 6. And I'm just going to do a very basic, you know, who, what, when, where, and why, you know, who do we forgive. There's going to be some overlap, but I wanted to just touch this, this subject, and, uh, and, and there's other things that I won't be able to touch tonight for the sake of time, but I just think it's important that as we grow in our Christian walk, that as we grow in our walk in faith with Christ, that we learn to forgive. You know, a lot of the reasons people uh, commit suicide, a lot of the reasons people give up on life, a lot of the reasons that people give up on church or give up on serving God is because that, you know, they came to church and somebody did them wrong and didn't ask for forgiveness or didn't uh, apologize or didn't do what, what they thought. And so they can't forgive that person. And, and they can't forgive the way that person is acting. And what we need to do is the Bible tells us we need to have that mentality of forgiveness. The Bible says there in Matthew 6, verse 5, it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. But be ye not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth the things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore ye pray. And so the reason I put this verses before, and we're going to go into the prayer, is that, you know, forgiveness... Or, or not forgiving someone is an act of pride. Just like the Pharisees here, they like to pray where everybody can see them. Oh, look at me. I'm going to give my tithe, and everybody has to see how much money I'm giving. Or look at me. I'm praying, and they give. 
you know, uh, we got a couple of Hispanic people in, the, in, the, in here tonight. Hispanics love to have big prayers, you know, these big, long prayers. I remember when I was little growing up and there was, um, you know, a storm. My grandma used to grab her rosary and then she'd pray out loud. Hi, Padre, and she'd give the whole rosary. And like, it was very, for everybody to see how religious she was. But here we see that God's saying, look, what you do, do these things, do them in secret. And let's go to the prayer. It says, uh, he says, uh, uh, after this manner, therefore pray ye. On top of that, if you want to take anything home with you, is not only do we need to forgive, but learn how to pray. The Bible gives us an actual good example of how to follow a model prayer, right? It says, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. See, it's not just forgive us our debts, but we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For in thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then he goes on to say, Jesus says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Forgive your trespasses. So the Bible is clear. Look, salvation is ours. We're saved by grace through Jesus Christ, but he will punish us. And he's very clear. He says, look, if you don't forgive your brothers or you don't forgive men, he says, I will not forgive you your trespasses. And let me tell you something. We're not perfect. And one thing that's very clear is we're going to commit sin against others. As a matter of fact, I just, I, I didn't do it on purpose, but I just asked my wife for forgiveness this afternoon. It's nothing big. I called her. And she's in the middle of putting the kids uh, into the car. And I was just asking her how far out she was from getting to church. And she was a little frustrated. She's putting the kids. They're acting up. And, uh, and I, I asked for forgiveness. I asked her to forgive me for... And I didn't want to feel her, make her feel pressured. But that's how she felt. You know, it's, it's our duty to forgive and to ask for forgiveness. My, my wife, thank God she forgave me. Because if not, I wouldn't be able to use this example right here in the in the sermon, but she did forgive me. Good job, honey. I love you. <laughs> but, you know, she forgave. And that's the attitude we need to have. You know, one of the things that's actually helped us in our marriage is that we do have that, that, uh, that willingness to forgive each other, the, our, uh, our trespasses to each other. You know, in marriage, forgiveness is crucial. Because if you don't forgive your wife or your wife doesn't forgive the husband, you know what, what builds up? Bitterness. And bitterness is something that's really hard to get rid of. You know, you hold a grudge against your husband or your wife for so long. Eventually, you know, I, I've heard people that say, well, I don't feel anything anymore. Look, I'd rather someone feel something than nothing at all. Forgiveness is hard. You've got to swallow your pride. You've got to overcome that, that, that selfishness inside that says, I did something wrong or I was wronged, but I'm no longer going to be bothered by it. I mean, it's really important to forgive for many reasons. But I think this is a really important reason. I mean, the Bible says that the fear of, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And he says here, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I mean, what better reason to forgive people than just so you, God doesn't have to get onto you? You know, the Bible is very clear here. Go to Ephesians 4. Go to Ephesians 4, verse 17. So who do we forgive? Well, according to the Bible, we forgive men their trespasses. We forgive everyone. And that doesn't sound very nice because it's something that's very hard to do. But we've got to remember that the Bible says that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We've got to remember that God's the one who's going to recompense the evil done to us. So for us, we just need to move on. And it gives us an, a, an easier ability to overcome obstacles so that we can stay focused on the price. Ephesians 4, verse 17 says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Verse 18 of Ephesians 4, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness, with greediness, with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. 
If so be that ye have heard him and have taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversations, conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away, and now he's going to give us this list of things that we've got to put away. He says, lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of the edifying that it may minister grace unto the hear, hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit, where, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So God gives us this big long list of instructions. And this one he's specifically speaking to the believers. So even though in, in Matthew 6 he says forgive men, then he goes and reminds us forgive your brothers and sisters in Christ. He says look, he says be ye kind one to one another. You can't be kind if you're not willing to forgive. He says, tender-hearted. Be, be soft in your heart. Be kind and tender-hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Why did God forgive you? Because Jesus Christ died on the cross. And he paid for all your sins. He forgave all your sins because he paid for them. So who do we forgive? We forgive everybody. You say, well, that doesn't make any sense. What about all the people that suffer abuse and suffer heartache? I agree that there's varying levels of abuse that we all suffer in life. Some of us have suffered more than others, but God specific, he's, he asks us to forgive. Look, I think that if you're able to forgive a bigger offense, offense, you're able to do more for the Lord. You know, God, I don't know everybody's life and I don't know every situation and it's really hard. And, you know, as a matter of fact, the guy I was talking to, he's like, well, you, why does God allow uh, little children to be abused? And why does God allow people to die and all that? And, you know, that question, I said, look, God tells us in his word that his ways are higher than our ways. You know, if we didn't have free will, then we'd just be like robots. You know, these are things that God has to allow for us to be able to take on the free gift of life. Because in order for you to believe... You have to have the choice of unbelief. In order for you to forgive, you have to have the choice of not forgiving, right? These are the things that God works in our lives. And so our goal should be to be tenderhearted, to be kind to one another, to forgive one another, even as Christ's sake, even for even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So we know now that we forgive everyone. You say, well, what about the people we don't we don't agree with? The false prophets, the reprobates. The evil, wicked people, do we forgive them also? Look, God says to love your enemies. Now, I can still hate someone and forgive them. I believe that that's biblical. God, God says that he is uh, angry with the wicked every day. There's other verses where he talks about how he hates certain uh, individuals, certain people that hate God, he hates them. Uh, David in Psalm tells us that he that he hates them with a perfect hatred. But if Jesus can forgive, he says that we can forgive. He says, "Forgive us as uh, forgive us as we forgive our debtors." As also Jesus Christ has forgiven us, right? So we see that forgiveness is a very crucial thing to our Christian walk to grow in Christ to be able to focus on things. Look, the Bible tells us not to be offended by people. And the Bible says that they're going to persecute us and that they're going to attack us and they're going to make fun of us and they're going to say that we're crazy. And the Bible says we have to leap for joy. It says we should enjoy that process because we get to suffer with Christ, uh, you know, along with Christ. So even though I've answered this in a way, but what are the things that we want to forgive? Well, we just forgive everything. Remember, we leave the, the, non, the, the, the punishment... We leave the punishment 
to the Lord. He is the one that's the, the avenger. And go to Luke. You're there in Matthew, Mark, Luke. But in Jeremiah 18, verse 23, I just saw this really stood out to me. And, and the Lord really just uh, laid it on my heart today as I was preparing for the message. In Jeremiah 18, verse 23, says, Yet, Lord, Jeremiah, speaking of a nation, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight, but let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thy anger. Us with them. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. And for a second there, it almost sounds like he's saying that he's not forgiven them. But who does he ask not to forgive them? The Lord. And what he's talking about specifically is those that have already rejected. You know, Jesus Christ died for all men, and he's forgiven all. But some men choose not to take on that gift, right? If I gave you a, a piece of paper that said, you know, um, all your debts are paid off, but you have to present this at this place, at this court, and you didn't, well, guess what? That court's not going to forgive your debts, right? You could have taken the gift, but you didn't do what, it was, what you were supposed to do. The only way that that could happen is, is if you present it and then all that is forgiven, right? So he's talking, he's, get, he's leaving that to God. He's saying, look, God, forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from my side, but let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of the anger. So even we see the prophets, the Old Testament prophets, uh, talking about, you know, they're moving forward. They're praying for the people. They're doing the work of the Lord. They're listening to what God's telling them to do, but they're asking God, to take care of that matter you know they're they're taking on that attitude of forgiveness you look at any old-time prophet and the reason that they were so powerful is because they didn't dwell on the past think about how horrible of a life that would be that you don't forgive anybody so you never do anything because you're like well if i do something they're gonna they're gonna do something bad to me and then i don't they're just i can't forgive them the bible just tells us to let it go go to luke 6 verse 27 it says but i say unto you which hear, love your enemies do good to them which hate who? You. Which hate you, which hate me. Luke 6, verse 28. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away the cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away the good, Thy good, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. If ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what, ye, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your father is also merciful. The Bible tells us, and you know, that's probably the most common attitude of unforgiveness. is when someone lends money to someone else, and then that person doesn't pay them back. I, I remember one time, this is many, 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 many years ago, my dad asked me, uh, I got money from school, like I got a loan to pay for school and there was money left over, and we wanted to go see uh, a self-help, uh, a motivator speaker, a motivational speaker by the name of Zig Ziglar, and it was like $1,000 a person. No, maybe it was like 500 Well, whatever, it was a lot of money. And I had the money, and I lived at home. I was in college. You know, my dad took care of everything. And so my dad go, asked me, he's like, well, will you pay for it? And I said, yeah, thinking that my dad would pay me back. And I remember I paid for the thing, and I paid for my and for his ticket, and we went to this thing. And then he never paid me back. I never asked him. And, and for, for a couple years there, I was angry that my dad – asked me to pay a thousand dollars for him and he didn't pay me back you know what's the deal like that's how spoiled and 
arrogant and pompous I was. I mean, my dad, who paid for my entire life, paid for college and paid for my car and paid for my food and paid for, you know, uh, forgave me all the stuff and helped me pay my debts. I couldn't let go of a thousand dollars. You know, the reason I use these verses is because he's saying here, look, the world sometimes is better than even Christians. It says, look, the world can forgive debt. The world can love uh, those that love them back. But he says, but when they don't love you and when they don't pay attention to you and when they don't pay you back, you still forgive that sin right there. I mean, you still forgive that, right? It says, but love your enemies. Now, my dad's now wasn't my enemy, but I probably thought he was my enemy because I was just in a wrong state of mind. But we have people who treat us bad. You know, I will give a good example. Just a couple years back, because that's not a, a good example of an enemy, but a couple years back, I had a business guy who came to me and he said he needed to borrow $1,500. And he, he already had the, the order. He just needed money to pay for the supplies. And then when the money came in, he was going to make three thousand. Uh, he was going to make like four grand. He'd pay me back my fifteen hundred, and he'd get his profits. He showed me the invoice, the whole thing, and I said, "Great." To this day, he's never paid me back. It's forgiven. I've never called him. I've never asked him for the money. I've never needed the money. I don't care if he ever puts it back in my pocket. It, I don't need it. The Bible says there because he says, "And if ye lend to." To them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing. And your reward shall be great and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your father is merciful. You know, we have to show mercy. So number, you know, I, I wasn't going to give points. But number one, we sometimes don't forgive money issues. Money issues are a big thing that people get mad about. But you know what else we don't forgive? Personal offenses between marriage or at church. Oh, so-and-so didn't look at me the right way. I'm not going to forgive him. You know, I'm not going to talk to him anymore. You're like, but, but he didn't do it on purpose. You know, someone trying to help out. I, I just can't forgive him. We, we've lost church members here in this church over someone not forgiving the other person. You know, we have a church, we have a, a couple of members that left because the other member disagreed on the type of, on the type of insurance we should buy for the church. They got mad at each other. One said, I'm sorry to the other. The other couldn't forgive them, left the church. That's a sad state of affairs because this is a place where we can serve the Lord. This is a good church where we're going to go out soul winning, where we're going to go out, learn the word of God, where we're going to go grow regardless of the numbers. But go to Matthew, go back to Matthew 18. Go ma back to Matthew 18. So we're, we're forgiving everything. We're forgiving men. But that question of forgiveness still comes. Even Peter did it. Go to Matthew 18, verse 21. The Bible says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children, all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him that the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all the debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, 
and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise my, shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. You know, the Lord delivered him unto the tormentors till he should pay what was due to him. What we can liken it to is the Lord's going to torment us day and night when we don't forgive. But what's interesting is who asked the question in verse 21? Peter. One of the apostles came and said, Lord, how often should I forgive a brother? Seven times? And what did Jesus say? Seventy times seven. And he's talking about in a day, right? He's saying, how often shall my brother, uh, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I, and I forgive him till seven times. You know, I can understand because we see everything in the Bible, right? So I can understand Jesus' frustration because Jesus has taught them all these things. And Peter's like, so I, how often do I need to forgive? Basically, he wants an excuse not to forgive. Even though he's learned that he should forgive because Jesus is going to not forgive your trespasses, he's with Jesus. He's looking for it. And that's how we act sometimes. We go to church and we're like, how often do I need to go to church before God thinks I'm a good person? How often, how much money do I need to get? Look, it's not based on anything we do. We just do it because it's our duty to God. And he says 70 times 70. I'm going to tell, go to Luke, go to Mark. No, you know what? Go to Psalm. Go to Psalm 103. Psalm in the Old Testament. I'll just read these two verses for you. But in Luke 17 verse 3, I just want to show you where I get this daily thing. It says, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive them. So we see here that Peter probably knew that, there was, that they had in the law to forgive. And Jesus says, I know what you're asking, but let me tell you, it's 70 times 7. Basically, because honestly, how many, nobody's going nobody's gonna to trespass you or do wrong 500 times in a day. So you're not going to get to 490 and be like, all right, 491's coming. We're good. No more forgiveness after this. No, I mean, he's, he's making a, he's given like a, an exaggerated example of just forgive all the time. And we do it, you know, sometimes it's the, sometimes the big stuff we forgive because we want God to see us like, oh God, please, you know, I forgave this person. But deep down, we haven't learned forgiveness because then all of a sudden somebody does something wrong at work and you're just mad the rest of the week. Oh, man. I, I, we need to just let everything go. You know, we need to let, uh, you need to not be offended. If you're going to be living a Christian life, you better, you better learn to forgive quickly because if you go soul winning and you knock on that door and they like close the door on you or they tell you to get out and they cuss you and they tell you all mean things, well, I mean, you could spend all your time just being angry. My, I'm like, move on. That's forgiven. Forgiven. Next. Forgiven. Next. Next. Because that, that's an all-day thing. And no matter how many people come to Christ, you're going to get all the negative people. They just close the door on you right away. Well, I don't want to hear it. I had a lady today be like, oh, I'm a Catholic. I said, oh, it's okay. And I want to ask. She's like, I'm a Catholic. I'm going to close the door on me. And it just, that happens every time that you go out so in it. Um, Go to Psalm 103 there, but before that, I'm going to read for you Mark 11, verse 24. It says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand, pray, when ye, and when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive them, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So the Bible is telling us, Look, don't come and ask for forgiveness, and you know you need to forgive a brother. You know, when do, we, where, when do we forgive right away? Where? At that moment. And look, if you didn't do it at that moment, go back, get that right, and then come to God in prayer. It says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So God say, look, you want these things, you want to believe, and he, I'm going to give them to you. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, 
neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So we see another verse that says, look, gee, God's not going to forgive you your trespasses if you don't forgive your brothers and sisters in Christ, if you don't forgive men. But why do we do it? Why do we forgive? Honestly, it's not easy. It's not something that's natural in our... Our sin nature tells us that we're too good to forgive others. I mean, that's the reality of it, right? We forgive people because we want to grow in Christ, because we want to walk in His will, because we want to better serve the Lord. But honestly, if you wanted just one answer, we forgive because we just love the Lord. And the Lord is our best example. Jesus forgave us all our sins. We, we forgive because we want to glorify God in the highest. You know, go to Matthew 6, 33. Well, you're there in Psalm, but let's read Psalm and then we'll go to Matthew 6. But in Psalm 103, Psalm 103, we see here a psalm. It says, a psalm of David. Psalm 103. The Bible says, a psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who is, he, who is he blessing? The Lord. He's praying to the Lord Almighty. He says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all my disease, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's, unto children's children, to such as keep his commandment, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all his host, ye ministers of this, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Why do we forgive? Because God's forgiven us. Look at this. He says, He hath not dealt with us after our sin, nor, re nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. As far as the east... Is from the West, he's forgiven our trespasses. I mean, I love these verses because it just, David realizes how powerful God is. How great of a mercy we receive from Jesus Christ. So, I mean, honestly, we should just forgive because God asked us to forgive. It should be that simple. God says, forgive others, just do it. You know, one of the greatest things is as you grow in the Word of God is that when you really want to do the things of God, you start doing what God asks you to do in His Word, even when it doesn't make sense to you. Even when, it does, when you don't like it. When God says, love your enemies, you know, when I first read that, I didn't like it. But, you know, I want to obey God. And I'm not saying we're perfect. Obviously, don't, don't get that wrong. We're not going to do everything perfectly. But why wouldn't we delight in His Word? Why wouldn't we want to do the things that God says we're going to do so we have His blessings? Look, even if we, if we suffer in life, God's going to reward us already because we have heaven. And if we do great things on this earth, then we get to heaven, and then he gives us other rewards and crowns in heaven. Go to Matthew, Matthew 6. Go to Matthew 6 and, and verse 33. 
And in Matthew 6, verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take the thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the days the evil thereof. Look, if you don't forgive, you're thinking about tomorrow. When is that guy going to ask me for forgiveness? Or when is he going to pay me back? Or when is he... Or when is my wife going to do what I asked her to do? Or what is my husband going to do? Or when are they going to fix that wrong? Or whatever the, the issue is. Look, if you're for Christ, you're going you're gonna to have many moments where you could have the excuse to not forgive. But we need to be focused on the Lord. In 2 Corinthians, just go to 2 Corinthians and we'll close out. So we, might, we might use one more verse, so let me not lie. But uh, I haven't decided yet. But 2 Corinthians 2, 2 Corinthians 2, number, uh, verse 5, it says, But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part that I may not overcharge you all. This is Paul talking about forgiveness. It says, Sufficient to a man is the punishment which is inflicted of many. Verse 7 of 2 Corinthians 2 it says, So that contrary wise, ye ought to rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave it I in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should take, get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So Paul's saying here, look, forgive, because Satan will use that to, your, to his advantage to cause you to fall more. And then he says, you're not ignorant. In other words, you're not dumb. You know what Satan's going to do if you don't forgive people, if you don't let go of that pride, if you don't let go of that anger, if you don't let go of that bitterness that's in your life. You know, go to Romans 4. Go to Romans 4. We will use it. And then we'll close out with this. Go to Romans 4. And we see here a great illustration of God, mercy, and grace. You know, we see, this is one of my favorite verses, so winning when people want to fight works, right? In verse 1 it says, What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if we... For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath wherefore of to glory, but not before God. For what saith scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for his righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without work, saying, Blessed are those are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Look, we should forgive because Jesus forgave. Verse 7, I mean, this is a salvation verse. Jesus forgave our iniquities and our sins are covered. Why wouldn't we want to do the same? I'm not saying we're, we're not saviors. Don't, don't get me mixed up. When we forgive others, it's just our duty to Christ. We get that blessing. I don't know if it does anything necessarily for the other person other than they realize that you forgave them something big. But maybe that's the testimony that you need with some family members or friends so that they can come to Christ. Maybe that's the, the testimony we need when the world attacks us so that they don't understand why we're so confident in our battle, in our spiritual battle for Christ. You know, it was weird. It's just still weird to me that the guy that, that wouldn't accept, he said, you know, I don't like the way that you present your gospel presentation. I hadn't even started. He said, I don't like the way that you're presenting yourself. And I said, okay, well, you know, I, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, you're just too confident. You're, you're too, uh, you're too, you have too much confidence in the way that you believe in things. And then he asked me, so you, are you sure that if you die today, you're going to heaven? I said, absolutely. He said, well, what if people do you wrong and do that? I said, it doesn't matter because life is a vapor. And, you know, when we die, we have to go, we're going to heaven. I said, I'm living an eternal life now. 
not a temporary life. He said, oh, that, that makes sense. But the only way we're able to do that is when we, when we apply all the things. Today is forgiveness. Tomorrow it might be something else. But this is a very important trait that we need in our lives. So, I mean, just to close out, we need to forgive everybody because God asked us to. We just need to do it, especially to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to do it immediately. We need to do it because if we don't forgive them, God's not going to forgive our trespasses. And it actually impedes our prayer life. He says, look, don't be standing in prayer if you haven't even forgiven your brother. Go take care of that and then come and ask and you'll receive all that you've been asked for. So let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your wonderful blessings.